something that I've been having a few emails about and just a word of caution to everyone is about paying employees properly when they're leaving the business. So I've had over the last few weeks a few emails from ACAS saying this employee um, is essentially unhappy because like they're not being paid correctly when they left and can you sort it or they're going to go to a tribunal. So a few flags of the things I've seen just to make sure everyone's aware. Notice pay will likely be stated in their contract or should be stated in their contract. Please abide by this. Don't pay them what you think that they should be paid for notice or if you've got another side agreement that's not written down or something, just abide by that. It's clearer. There's no headaches there. With holiday pay, anything that they've accrued but unused should be paid to them. Again, that way it's clear, stated, if necessary, when you're sending them the letter. If you need to put the extra details in just to make sure it's clear, then do that. But I've had a, a club come back and say, actually, we thought he was only owed like £100 for holiday, but turns out it's like £300 and that's why the guy's kicking off. The big one that I'm seeing a lot is people who are paid per week, not actually being paid per week. So I, I had a club who uh, had an employee who was being paid for 40 hours a week, meant to be paid per week. But instead, they were paying him 160 hours a month for four weeks in the month, right? Which you assume is right. But not every single month has four weeks in it. So over the course of his employment, he was underpaid by £2,000. They've had to then pay that. And that wasn't a nice thing for the manager to realise when I was like, can you go back and just double check the math? He was like, oh, wait, this was actually a massive flaw. So making sure you do all that homework before paying the employee at the end will save you a whole lot of hassle when ACAS come knocking on the door saying this employee is willing to go to a tribunal if this isn't settled. I know that there's, there's been a few other examples, but those are the main ones I've seen so far. Making sure notice is paid properly, making sure outstanding holiday is calculated properly. And if someone's being paid per week, then actually paying them per week rather than assuming what the weeks are in the month. And the other thing as well, which makes it a lot easier, legally you don't have to do this, is if on your pay slips, you detail out holiday being paid as a separate line. You don't legally have to do this, but if you do, it is so much easier to have those conversations about how much holiday is owed because you can actually prove that you have paid X number of days in that year. And I'm going to say you get a lot less challenges on it because everybody can see what holiday is. Thanks for watching. If you want a free tribunal audit of your employment contract and handbook, click the link in the description below.